This is the current view of the downtown Oklahoma City. Doesn't this view look peaceful and satisfying to look at? Doesn't the city look organized and sustainable? If you were to visit Oklahoma City, would you want to stay in downtown Oklahoma? Here's a little fun fact for you. Oklahoma City has gone a long way to have a city like this. And believe it or not, this city is not done developing yet. Oklahoma City has been under a redeveloping plan called Metropolitan Area Projects Plan 3, MAPS 3 for short. In this following documentary, I will take you through the whole redevelopment area experience and show you how amazing Oklahoma City really is. It all started with a Chinese architect named I. M. Pei, who, during the 1960s, had a future of Oklahoma City in mind from the aspect of urban development and started the proposal of Pei Plan. Pei saw the potential and the opportunity that the city imposes, which is one of the reasons why he proposed the plan. Pei's plan was both simple and complex. The vision would be that he wanted downtown Oklahoma City to be a place full of joy and life, a place where people should want to stay after work and hanging out with friends and family, not just a place as a central business district area. It is complex, however, as it requires a whole redevelopment of downtown area, and it would cost a lot of money and destruction to the lives of the residents there. Unfortunately, the public's reaction to the plan did not go in Pei's favor. They did not agree that the pay plan should flip the whole downtown region. The conflict situation arose. Oklahoma City had to undergo modern development, yet the current plan was rejected. Therefore, as a solution, the formation of Oklahoma City Urban Renewal Authority, OCRA, in 1962 helped to ease the public's anxiety and it helped all authority and architect involved to come up with a better project plan. This was when MAPS 3 came along. After Ochre formed, discussion about a better and more modern development were discussed. Slowly, MAPS 3 formed and was proposed to the public, and this time the public agreed and was excited about such plan. MAPS 3 is a project that is mainly focused for urban renewal for the downtown area, and this project is a combination of many pay-as-you-go series of projects. These will be shown later in the documentary. MAPS 3 main objective is to remove blight, improving building infrastructure, building better transportation systems, roadways, entertainment, and leisure facilities and parks. MAPS 3 was initially approved in 1993, even though residents of Oklahoma City were rather reluctant and hesitant at first. Since MAPS 3 will be a long-term project and operated in a very large scale, the final approval from voting was passed on December 8, 2009. Funding was one of the main reasons why the public was hesitant about the project. The solution that the government implemented was sales tax, which was a simple and easy option to fund the city's renovation and construction. The tax period started in April 2010 and ended in December 2017. For MAPS 3, there are eight pay-as-you-go projects, and the estimated cost is $777 million, with $17 million on a contingency fund. such a large-scale and long-term project happening, as well as eight pay-as-you-go projects, it is important to have a very well-written timeline. This timeline shown here is an estimate of each project's start and finish timeline, respectively. Each project is separated into two separate phases at least, and each phase has a different objective and goal. I will introduce three of the eight projects to you now. The Senior Health and Wellness Center is the official title of the project. The aim for this project is to focus on the seniors of the community and try to help them connect with the city and the available resources for them. The centers are an important piece of the puzzle for the seniors, as the newly built centers will be a state of the art and will encourage seniors to get outside of their comfort zone to meet new people as well as exercising. This project is in the $52 million budget and is able to fund four centers at different locations around the city. Each center is different from one another, as the center will reflect the needs of the respective or corresponding community and will include an operating partner. That being said, amenities, facilities, and programs provided will vary from center to center, but the general facilities such as gym, pool, trails, and art areas should be at least at every center. All centers are designed to be built in different phases, hence there are four phases in this project. Phase 1 is the first wellness center, which started in 2013 and completed in 2017, which is now open to the seniors, located in Walkwell Avenue and operated by Healthy Living Fitness. 
Phase 2 is the second wall in the center, which started in 2015 and completed in 2018, located in Walker Avenue and is open to seniors. It is operated by NorthCare. Phase 3 is the third wellness center. It is scheduled to begin construction in 2018 and for completion in 2020. The location are to be determined. Phase 4 is a fourth wellness center. It is scheduled to begin in 2020 and for completion in 2022. And the location of the center has yet to be determined. Morden Streetcar Transit, which is the official name of the project. The aim of this project is to have a streetcar to connect to the downtown part of Oklahoma City to Bricktown, Midtown, and Automobile Alley, as well as having maintenance facility for the streetcars. This project has a budget of $130 million and it is first designed to have 5 to 6 miles of track, but will vary depending on how the allocation of the budget is. There are two phases of the construction. The first phase will start the construction of the initial loop and related facilities while the second phase will be completing as much additional route miles as the budget allows. This project is completed in 2018 and has now been in operation as a public transportation for the citizens since then. There have been mixed reviews of such projects, which will be later shown in the documentary. The Downtown Convention Center This project of the Convention Center is to replace the old and aging Convention Center for a new and modern facility. This will attract additional revenue to the local economy through much larger conventions, events, and shows. According to the Greater Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce, studies have shown that local economy can boost due to a newer and modern convention center, and this is exactly what Oklahoma City is missing and losing business and deals to nearby cities with better convention centers. Therefore, there is a $250 million project budget, and this project is currently undergoing at the east of Sizzletail Park. The center will be around 470,000 square feet with 235,000 sellable space. It is scheduled to start construction in 2016 and designed to be completed in 2018. But it is still under construction, and according to MAPS project manager David Todd, it is already 40% complete and will be officially done with construction in 2020. What do you think about the MAPS 3 project overall? I think it's been a marvelous project and I have most definitely benefited from it. I am now 76 years old and I always meet my friends at the Senior Health and Wellness Center down the road at Rockwell Avenue. Have you seen the facility? It's so nice there and the staff are so amazing. They help me and my husband a lot. My husband gets grumpy sometimes and he just wants to stay home. But I get to persuade him to go to the center with me and play with our friends or go to the gym and he comes back home really happy. That is really great to hear. Is there any other things about the health center you would like to share? Um, let me think. Oh, they do have really nice events happening all day and most of the week. It gets so busy on weekends, even on weekdays too. Most of my friends and I just love to go there and drink tea and chat. The environment there really is lovely. Apart from the health center, is there any other facilities you use for, that's from MAPS 3? Oh, yes, yes, I do. I sometimes use the trails at Lake Hefner and the parks near there. The trails are really nice and dog friendly. I get to take my dogs there sometimes. I have arthritis and tendonitis. Sometimes walking is too much, so I don't go to the trails as much as I would like to. Did it take long for the health center or the trails to be built? Not for long, if I really think about it. It might have been a year or two, but I got to tell you this. I live just down the road from the health center. Boy, the construction was a pain in the butt. It was rather loud and dusty, especially in the summer and fall. They made my cough worse. But once I found out it was something for the elders, a health center, which I thought was amazing. I thought it was for the better and stopped complaining and hoped for the workers to get the job done sooner, which they did, and I'm a happy old lady. Thank you so much for your time. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you so much for letting me ask you some questions. What do you think about the MAPS 3 overall? I think it's great. It made downtown a much prettier place and a little more efficient too. But let me tell you, the years that it took to build was not pretty at all. Oh? Do you mind explaining a little bit more? Oh no, not at all. I work at the downtown area near the Devon Tower. That's the streetcar loop park and trails within the downtown area. 
in the river that's south of the region, and I think there was something else. But anyways, there was just so much that was going on year after year, and it was just horrible and a little exhausting. What do you mean by exhausting? Was it too much trouble navigating around the construction, or did it seem like it was never-ending? Both, actually, especially during the time period when the workers were doing the streetcars. It was god-awful. Traffic was so slow and had to be redirected all the time. It was especially bad during rush hour, and it sometimes would take me an hour to get home. But I must say, the streetcars now are all really pretty and efficient. I think they are fast and easy to understand and use. I sometimes use them on my lunch break and go someplace else to eat. I like the trolleys a lot. It was just during the construction period that was a pain. And about the exhausting part, I meant that it seemed like the construction was never ending. And there was just like one after the other after another. One part of the city is being built, then the next day another part is being torn down. Now I'm just glad that the whole time period is finally over and the only project left is the convention center. I'm excited about that, actually, because I hear it will be grand and really beautiful. Have you heard about the new projects that might get past the MAPS 4? What do you think about it? Well, I think that MAPS 3 has done a lot for our city, and we are improving every day. So why not? I like what MAPS 4 is trying to achieve. I just hope that it will not be in downtown or anywhere else near here. Because just in my own personal opinion, I've had 10 years worth of construction, and that is more than enough for me. Thank you so much for your time. That was a lot of information you gave me and some new perspectives. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. As you can see in this picture, Oklahoma City has come a long way since the land run and when the city started to develop. Every day, the city is improving itself. The urban renewal project of Oklahoma City is not finished yet, as there is still a lot of potential to continue to expand. Maps project manager David Todd has had an interview with Fox 25, and he stated that there will be a potential match for a project, and all ideas are welcome from the public. Ideas such as having more street lights on the street. It is clear that both Todd and the citizens can see the continuous growing potential of Oklahoma City, which is why there will be a voting or election on December 10, 2019, for the proposed map four. Mans 4 has around 16 projects and is projected to raise $978 million over 8 years for 16 pay-as-you-go projects. All of these projects will mainly be focused on neighborhood and human needs, quality of life, and job-creating initiatives. As you can see from this documentary, Oklahoma City has a lot of potential to make the city better and improve in various aspects. Match 3 has been going so well that Match 4 has been proposed and now is under review and will be voted in December. Urban renewal is such an amazing process for the city, and I hope you all can continue to follow the journey of Oklahoma City.